Hi everyone, my name is Taylor and I run Made by Taylor Rose, which is a small scrunchy business <laughs> located in Australia. Today I'm showing you how to make a pegboard for markets or also a donut board if you would like to make one as well. So this pegboard is quite a big one. So for this project you'll need the pegboard from Kmart or any other pegboard that you can find. You also need dowel. I purchased mine from Bunnings. It was 19 millimeters and just over a meter long. For this particular project, for this particular board, you'll need at least three. I made about nine out of each of them. The pegboard who came out also comes with 10 bonus ones so it was exactly 35 pieces all together which fits the pegboard perfectly uh, you'll also need hinges I just used two for this project and also a plank you can purchase that from Bunnings as well I just used a board that I found laying around at home and just we cut them into uh, 55 millimeter boards uh, but yeah, you can definitely purchase those from Bunning. And then we also just use a little bit of rope. It was a little bit tougher than just your normal twine or anything. It's a little bit thicker. So you also you can purchase that from Bunning. As for equipment, my brother used a power saw. And please don't use anything you're not comfortable using or know how to use them as you can hurt yourself. So that's a little disclaimer there. You could also use a hand saw, but you just have to have the correct equipment like clamps to hold it there um, so you can saw. You'll also need a sander. Um, I used a hand sand sander but you can like electric hand sand up, but you can also just sand by hand, which is like the cheaper option if you do not have a sander at home. You'll also need a drill and some screws. And I also used a staple gun to staple in the rope. So there is quite a few like big ticket items here. Um, obviously it would be harder if you didn't already have most of these items at home. So I've just gone to the shed and found these. So these are just small hinges. That's what they are, 50 millimeter. Um, they're a little bit old and a little bit rusty, but they will do the trick. When I was out in the shed, my brother found a piece of old wood and we just decided to cut 55 millimeter planks off it, which we're gonna use for the back of the board. You can purchase this sort of stuff from Bunnings though, already pre-cut. We cut off two planks. They were about 5.5 centimeters by 50 centimeters. Next, we drilled hinges into the planks of wood. Before you do this next part, make sure the screws that you will be choosing for this project aren't longer than the thickness of the board because you'll see that the screws that we chose go straight through the board into the front. So we ended up cutting the screws a little bit shorter so they didn't poke through. It was already a raised part on the Kmart boards so we decided to put the plank neck right next to it so then it laid flush with the other board that was already there. We put one plank on either side of the board. I'll definitely recommend doing this before actually hinging those planks to the board, but pretty much we just cut some rope, um, adjusted it to how far I wanted the board to lean and then stapled it in. But it was really hard to staple the planks once the hinges were already in place because it was really awkward to kind of hold it there while stapling in the rope. So definitely, Put a little bit of rope on first before you put the hinges onto the actual board. Next we measured up the Kmart pegs that came with the board and just marked out how long they were against the dowel. Then we just cut them. You can either use a power saw or a hand saw for this. Then I just sanded all the edges of the dowel pieces just so they wouldn't get caught on any of the fabrics. So this is pretty much how it turned out. I ended up painting the front part where we accidentally went through the board. So you can't really tell that much. Uh, the back, obviously you just have two uh, different planks and the pieces of string that come out with the hinges. So it was really easy to make. And I'd just like to point out, you could split this into two and make two smaller ones. I'll add some photos of my other set of pegboards here. Um, I just pretty much split this pegboard in right in the middle and removed one row of the pegs and I made these boards here and I had some photos. I hope you all enjoyed that tutorial. It was a little bit diff difficult for me to film um, bits and pieces because my brother was making it and I didn't get to film the sanding part because I actually sanded them myself with the electric sander. But I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I'm honestly over the moon. It sits so perfectly. It's so much better than my other display boards. Uh, it just, just sits perfectly. I love it. Uh, it doesn't wobble at all. I've just... Here's another little clip of how it turned out. If you don't already follow my Instagram, follow uh, Made by Taylor Rose or my Facebook Made by Taylor Rose as well. Uh, you'll definitely see photos of this at upcoming markets that I'm going to. 
with all the scrunchies on it. So I usually take photos of all my scrunchie stalls. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below and I'll try and get back to them as soon as I can. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel because there'll be more content like this coming up in the future, more tutorials and more business advice in general and of course more vlogs. So I hope you have a really lovely day and thank you so much for watching. Bye.